wanted to check out ingredients that are in shampoos and conditioners. I did find some plant oils and some natural things, but for the most part I found a whole lot of stuff that I can't pronounce. I thought it would be really fun to go check out the chemical gardens where a lot of other companies grow their ingredients. Now when I called, they told me to make sure I was well covered. Hopefully I've done a good enough job. I'm gonna go take a little walk around and see what we can find. PEG 150, according to this sign. This one goes in baby shampoo. Isn't it pretty? It's not so bad on its own, but there is some risk of contamination because of the way that it's processed and things that it's processed with. So there's a possibility that it could contain some dioxane or ethylene oxide. You know, not too big of a deal. Oh, yes. There's some propylene glycol. This one's used as a skin conditioner, so it's basically like using natural oils or natural butters, except you can just use this instead. There's not too much concern surrounding this one. Um, tests have shown that this can be harmful and or toxic to non-reproductive organs, which of course obviously that's not a big deal. Oh, here we go. Look, we got a couple different kinds of sulfates here. Sulfates are pretty cool because they're basically like soap, except they're crap. Now sulfates are a surfacant, so they're used in soaps and shampoos, and for some reason they're used in lots of other things, but they basically work just the same way that a soap molecule does. So what they do is reduce the surface tension of water to help you get clean. Surficants have a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic end. So one end that attracts water and one end that repels water. And you can achieve this exact same effect by using actual soap. That's <laughs> time for that. So sulfates are pretty safe. There is some evidence that they can be a skin irritant, which is fine since you're only using it on your skin. The science shouldn't be that big of a deal as long as you're using it in limited quantities, which should be perfectly easy because it's only in everything. I think we've got some polymers and cross polymers over there. So these chemicals are processed with those chemicals and that creates like a whole new set of chemicals. Science. I think there's some ethyl exylated lauryl alcohol up on that hill. Hmm. <gasps> oh my God. Yes, parabens. Look at all of them. Oh my God, there's so many different kinds. Here's some methyl parabens. The main concern with these is that they can disrupt the endocrine system. Things like your hormones, what makes you male or female. These are in season two. So parabens are a preservative and I could just go on and on about these all day. These are your lips or your eyes, all those areas where things are really easily absorbed. That's what parabens are in. Look, I'm just gonna take my glove off. I wanna... Look at this one. Look at these. These are so nice. I don't think I should have touched those parabens. Here's some DM DM Hydantoin. That just rolls right off the tongue. This one is known to be an immune toxicant. It can be an allergen. It might even be cancer causing. Nobody's really even sure. That guy just threw some trash. Wow. It's compost. Dice terol dimonium chloride. And whoa, ethyl hexylene glycerin. Now these guys are fine as long as you don't get them in your eyes. So beautiful. I wish I could have a garden like this. Here's one. PPG, oh yeah, I know this one. This is another sulfate type, surfacant sort of thing that's like a, oh crap. Oh my god, oh my god.
This is like everyone's favorite. This is the chemical that makes all the other chemicals smell good. You know when you buy things like cucumber green tea and they don't even actually have cucumber or green tea in them? That's fragrance. You don't even really know what's in this because the manufacturers don't have to disclose it to you. It smells like poison. This fragrance plant looks cool.